Uh, so good morning. I am Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and I have with me Jordan Fuchs, Georgia's Deputy Se Secretary of State. Um, and um, uh, here's another question for the perspective of the voter, Jordan. Um, what should the voter do if they registered absentee and either before or after they sent in their absentee ballot, they decide to vote in person for uh, possibly a common one I've heard is uh, they registered absentee, they filled out their ballot, um, but they sent it very close to, or the, um, they would send it very close to the day of election so that they're, they would um, show up to vote in person to make sure their vote counted. Um, now obviously nobody should uh, take a chance of voting twice. So if they did do such a thing, they would announce, uh, um, I would hope that uh, that uh, they're showing up and they just want to double check that their vote counts, but they've already voted absentee. So in the, these types of situations, what, what would be the, um, the result in Georgia? So we had a couple of cases of that this year. Um, we're seeing a lot of concerns related to the post office. Um, sometimes the county election officials will not um, upload the data related to that particular ballot fast enough for the voter to see. And so people get antsy and they go and um, attempt to vote again. Uh, we had about a thousand cases of a variety of di double voting occur in the state of Georgia. And what we are trying to make it very clear to folks is you can't vote twice, please don't. And there is a process in place to uh, spoil that ballot or cancel that request. So if you are in the polling place and you decide, you know, I know I have requested an absentee ballot, it's not here yet, or I have it in hand, you turn in that absentee ballot mm. to the election worker and they process the um, spoilage of that ballot. Excellent. So um, it's, it sounds like in Georgia, you do have an online ballot tracker that a absentee ballot uh, recipient would be able to track um, the the status of their ballot being received. Oh yeah, so COVID-19 has forced states and counties across the country to innovate. And one of the, the greatest innovations that we have is this new tool called Ballot Tracks. A lot of states are using it. Um, we implemented it about, about, mm, about a month ago. And it's adding a level of reassurance from the voter's perspective of, okay, where is my ballot in this process? Has the state sent that request out to the counties? Where, where is it at? And uh, hopefully when somebody signs in, they're saying, hey, it's being tracked through the mail process at this stage. So it's just adding a level of reassurance to that voter that they can um, know exactly where that ballot is in the process and um, appropriately make the decision whether I need to go vote in person or I'm going to wait for the post office. Excellent. So um, does it actually show um, the, the result of possible adjudication, meaning uh, ex, uh, whether or not the ballot was um, accepted, rejected, or cast? Or so it does immediately through um, email, texting, and through the online portal, it will tell you once it's been accepted, rejected, and um, the state of Georgia recently passed some legislation last year that gives uh, individuals who have a rejected ballot a cure period to um, resolve whatever the issue was, whether it was a sign signature match or maybe a, a data entry error, whatever it might be, right. there's a cure period to make sure that if you're that person that's really voting that ballot, you can come in and fix the issue. Yeah, is that uh, prior to the election or is that overlap? I think there's about, uh, I think I think it's 10 days, but forgive me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, and it's before the election. Got it. Um, and uh, is that um, proactive or is, that the, is it the voters' responsibility to verify themselves? So the counties make that particular voter aware of the issue. Right. And then the voter right. has a period of time to correct it. Excellent. Okay. So the, uh, okay. So that, that's, it's more like what I would expect to be a typical adjudication process has just been expanded to include um, this uh, online tool. So that's, that's great news. That's uh, more helpful. 
obviously a lot more work for the elections officials, but um, in a way it's, uh, it's providing, uh, modernizing the system slightly. So it's, it's great news. Um, uh, okay, so um, yeah, I think, I, I think that's very clear. Thank you very much, Jordan. Um, and this has been Lincoln Shorts. So.